When I was doing my internship in game development, I was working on a 3D survival game. After I finished creating the main scene, they assigned me the task of building the tutorial scene. I set up the player as a prefab and placed it into the tutorial scene, but then everything started breaking. This was because they had used singletons everywhere. For those not familiar, let me explain what singletons are in a practical way. A singleton is a design pattern that ensures you have only one instance of a class that can be accessed globally from anywhere in your code. For example, if you have a game manager singleton, any script can access it by simply writing game manager dot instance dot do something. This makes it very convenient to access important game systems without having to manually connect references between scripts. In the project I was working on, they had made everything a singleton. The inventory system, game manager, object pooler, all of these were set up so you could access them using dot instance. While this seemed convenient at first, it became problematic because if any of these singleton instances weren't properly initialized or available when another script tried to access them, the game would break with null reference errors. This is exactly what happened in my tutorial scene. Just to get the player to move, I had to make sure all these singleton instances were properly set up and initialized in the correct order. As an intern, I thought this was just the standard way of doing things. However, after doing some research, I came across a Unity talk by Ryan Hipple, where he explains how to use scriptable objects to handle this type of problem in a much better way. Let's take a look at how that works. I've created a simple game where the goal is to shoot a barrel, and every time the barrel is hit, the player's score goes up. The scoring is managed by a UI manager, which I've set up as a singleton. So, whenever a bullet hits the barrel, the bullet script calls this singleton instance of UI manager to increment the score. This works perfectly as long as UI Manager is active in the game. However, if I disable UI Manager and then try to play the game, I get a null reference error because the bullet script is still trying to access UI Manager, which isn't available. Let's fix this by implementing a new system. In order to understand this approach, think of it like YouTube's subscribe mechanism, where users subscribe to a channel and receive notifications whenever a new video is uploaded. First, let's create a user. We'll create a script called game event listener. In this script, we need to subscribe to the channel to receive notifications. In the onEnable method, we'll call gameEvent.subscribe and pass this as a parameter, which refers to the current game object. The game event in this case is like the YouTube channel we're subscribing to. You might get an error saying game event is not defined, but don't worry about that for now. We'll create that script after this one. In the onDisable method, we'll unsubscribe from the channel by calling game event dot unsubscribe and passing this as a parameter. Let's also add game event as a serialized field. Now you've created the listener, but let's say you want to perform a specific task when you receive a notification. For example, in our game, when a bullet hits a barrel, we want to increment the score count. To run that function, we'll use unity events. If you're not familiar with unity events, they're a way of calling methods by assigning game object. You've probably used them with buttons, where you assign a game object and specify which function to run. So let's serialize a unity event and call it response. Then create a public method called on event raised and invoke the response within it. We've made this method public because we'll call it from our channel class. And just like that, we have our game event listener class ready to use. Now let's create our channel script, which we'll call game events. This script will act like our YouTube channel that will notify subscribers or game event listener object. It will be a scriptable object, so we remove mono behavior and add scriptable object instead. We'll also add the create asset menu attribute so we can create this script as a scriptable object asset in the Unity editor. Remember, we're calling two methods in our game event listener class, subscribe and unsubscribe. Let's create these two methods as public in our game event script. Now we have to store our subscribers somewhere. We'll use a hash set for this. Why are we using a hash set? Because a hash set ensures each listener is unique and provides fast lookup times. Let's create a private read-only hash set and call it listeners. This will store all our game event listener objects. Now let's create a method that will broadcast the signal, like when a new video is uploaded and we have to alert all the subscribers. Next, we'll use a for loop to iterate through the subscriber list. Inside the loop, we'll call the onEventRaised method for each listener which we defined in our listener class. Now that both scripts are ready, let's test them. In our game, the UI manager will act as the listener. Start by creating a new object within the UI manager and name it subscribe. Inside subscribe, 
create another object and name it on UI event. You could attach the script directly to the UI manager object, but structuring it this way has an advantage that I'll explain in a moment. Next, attach the game event listener script to this new subscribe object. Then, assign the Unity event by dragging the UI Manager object and selecting the Update Score method. At this point, we're listening to the event channel, but the channel itself is not yet available. To create it, make a scriptable object by right-clicking, selecting Create, and naming it on UI event. Now, we have our event channel. Now, whenever the bullet hits the barrel, it will notify all listeners. In our case, the UI Manager is Listener. Now, we need to broadcast the signal so that all listeners get notified and perform their tasks. We will broadcast the signal when the bullet hits the barrel. So to do this, serialize the game event in the bullet script and call broadcast when the bullet hits the barrel. Now, let's test the code. As you can see, everything is working correctly. Additionally, if the UI manager is disabled, the game continues running without any errors. With this approach, our code is no longer tightly coupled, which means you won't encounter errors if any scripts or objects are missing. Additionally, we can create data bus that will allow us to pass any type of data when broadcasting. I also took it a step further by creating a custom editor that displays which objects are subscribed to which events. Remember I told you to create child objects under UI Manager. This way you can create custom editor that will check directly from the editor to see which objects are linked to specific game event and understand why they're subscribed. No need to dig into scripts to troubleshoot missing functionality. This approach provides a lot of flexibility. Let me know in the comments what you think of this approach and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.